So I farm so hard, the employees wanna find me And then wanna hire me What's 100k to a guy like me? Could you please remind me? Farm so hard, this ain't easy Working late nights, you best believe me My grades can only go ace Never wanna see another B unless I'm Jay-Z Farm so hard, let's get paid Woo! Welcome to Farm So Hard Guys, guess what? That voice you just heard, he's back again I'm Jonathan back Richardson as Thank you for having me The original rapper of Farm So Hard He's back again <laughs> Rapper right. turned pharmacist <laughs> uh, Jonathan, go ahead and introduce yourself Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I'm Jonathan Richardson And I'm a pharmacy operations coordinator yep, and My name's Oscar Santalo I'm also a pharmacy operations coordinator Today we're talking about interviewing like a pro previous episode that we did together we talked about interviewing from a manager perspective and i feel like it would do it justice since it's going to be residents and budget season's over jobs being created might as well talk about um how to interview successfully so jay rich you want to hit us with the background info what's your reason for leaving a job are you are you graduating or are you trying to obtain some professional growth are you unsatisfied or bored in your current role uh, are there personal reasons you want to relocate to a different location or, or did you recently just get laid off? This, this time is probably the most difficult and time consuming uh, for, the, for the person. The process includes you know, selecting your goals and your future roles. You have to take time and do your job search. You have to go through the application process. Uh, you have to prepare for the actual interview, which ultimately leads to your interview day. And then lastly, you're going to have to end up with some interview follow-up. So it's definitely a, a strenuous time. It's pretty stressful. It can be anxiety-ridden for some individuals. There's nothing like a, a PGY2 knowing that they haven't made pharmacist salary in two years, and it's like May, and they're like, I don't know where I'm going to work. It's nothing more frustrating, awkward than that. So because in the previous episode, we talked about like, you guys seen it from the manager perspective and hopefully for the clinical specialist out there you can kind of appreciate like how much actually goes into posting the job and organizing and coordinating and don't forget that's not their full-time job right they're running a pharmacy so it gets interesting but also on the candidate like me like it takes a long time like am i do i have to move do i like i have family like how does that work so it's the probably a very stressful process but hopefully We'll give you guys some good nuggets as we work through this. I just want to start us off to make sure that, you, you know, making sure you're selecting your goals and understanding the future roles. Align your career goals with your roles. Is this the job to get to the next job, to get to the next job, to get to your dream job? Um, is like, if, are you trying to be a, a clinical specialist for the rest of your life? Are you interested in administration in the future? Do you see yourself in pharmacy forever? Those are some like interesting discussions that you're going to have to reflect on yourself. Consider the organization. Um, a lot of times people like to work at a certain organization. The benefits are there. Uh, what kind of organization do you see yourself working in? And then also training and mentorship, establishing a network. What are some ways we can do to locate positions? All right, so how to locate positions. It's pretty much the same that I was talking about in the last episode. Um, you're going you're gonna to search through ads and professional journals and newsletters online. You can uh, do PPS or placement services at mid-year or the other national professional conferences. Uh, you can get recommendations from colleagues. You can get them uh, on social media, like we talked about, we harped on last time with LinkedIn. Recruiting firms, prospect list, uh, inter internet job site postings. I know that's you know, pretty much how people start their, their search, is just seeing what's available on the market uh, you know, through Indeed or Glassdoor. You can attend job fairs. Uh, or other sponsored events by professional organizations in the state level and regional level. Guys, I'm telling you, we're at the day and age where you got to start marketing yourself. Like, I'll, I'm telling my interns at the hospital, it's like, get on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever. Well, also on the flip side, we're talking about LinkedIn. Like, make sure that your Facebook or your other area, avenue of social media, it's professional. They will go and look. Um, not this year, but the previous year, I'm pretty, I know that one of the residents looking at other candidates, like they looked up their Facebooks and saw if they're professional or not. So yes, you can use LinkedIn, but make sure your other avenues of social media, it's kept as professional as possible, depending on yeah. how professional you want to get in your career. Right? Yeah, that's, that's huge. And that's something that I, I, uh, you know, 
I started thinking about when I started pharmacy school a million years ago. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to start posting, you know, conscious things and keeping, you know, my private life mostly private and just sharing the things that are that won't come back and be mean. And then Jay Rich, I, I had to de- I had to delete my Facebook from high school. I just had to delete it. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm a, <laughs> I am not the same person anymore. Like, you remember you were in class when I deleted. Yeah, that's right. Me and Jay Rich are classmates. That's how far back we go. Yes, like, sir. Like I deleted. I remember when I friended you. Like, Oki, okay, someone hacked your Facebook. I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> that's me. No, that's me. <laughs> I had no. to. No, no, I had to do it. So just just because of like the roles you'd be applying for, they want a professional person. So those are some things you need to consider. Definitely. Yeah, so reviewing the job description from the manager side, remember, they're going to keep it as vague as possible. People would caution you if everything in the job description is extremely vague, be careful because that, that kind of means that you don't really know what the job fully entails. Um, make sure you're reviewing the day-to-day responsibilities and then try to see who you'd be collaborating with. So it's like, well, Am I under the director, the manager, the coordinator, under the technician, or am I under someone that's not in pharmacy at all? So those are some things that you need to review while going through the, um, the application. Mention application. Uh, Jay Rich, hit us with the application process. So you want to, for the application process, you want to make sure you're, you're completing the requirements of the application. Like uh, Oki said in the last episode, I think, he was talking about how HR kind of weeds out potential candidates. Um, and that could be due to an in- incomplete application, and that's kind of a bad way to to lose a lose an interview. Uh, you want to take your time to write a letter of intent or a cover letter. A good cover letter definitely helps you stand out uh, from other candidates, especially when you're going for you know a residency where you're pretty much on the same playing field as a lot of applicants. So you want to find a way to stand out with a good letter of intent or cover letter. Uh, you want to make sure your CV is updated. Uh, you want to have appropriate references. Like again, you know I why? And, and I'm sorry, Kyle, but you know why I said appropriate references, right? Have you have you gone through some of these references, these like preceptors, and are writing these resonance? <laughs> yeah, you know what? And especially like, you know, not only are they not that good of references, especially professionally, but the things that they say in these reference letter letters of recommendation or things like that, they're just not very good. They don't speak well to the person's ability as a pharmacist so that really hurts the candidates chances when when we're weeding through these applications and and i appreciate the honesty and candor but i'm just surprised that out of everyone the intern or resident or pharmacist or whoever asked this person and like thinking that they would write them a good letter and they don't so and if you and if you know that your references are not going to write you a good letter that kind of tells you a little bit about you at the same time. So didn't mean to cut yeah. you off. I just wanted to hit that point real quick. No, definitely. Like this is the best of the best you could do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Something that I think is important, especially in the application process is letting the director or supervisor know that you applied for the position. You know, HR screens out a, a lot of applicants, uh, depending on their, their method. But I think it's always important to, to reach out to the, the director or the supervisor and just let them know, introduce yourself, give them a quick elevator pitch, and let them know that you applied for the position. Again, like let's say that you just came out of residency. They want the position to be with three years of experience. HR may still see your one-year residency as one-year experience. But in the same job description, it says, hey, residency training preferred or one year required whatever so that's kind of why you should follow up just in case because there could be easy miscommunication um, in that initial screening process yeah definitely and when I was uh, fresh out of residency or getting ready to wrap up residency and I was applying to a lot of these uh, job positions that require those three years of experience I wouldn't hear back from HR or I'd get a straight-up decline from HR where I would reach out to the director at that t- at that time, and they would be like, "Oh, I didn't. This didn't even come across my table. Let me take a minute to to go over it." So letting them know, put your foot in the door, and you also want to follow up in like two to four weeks after applying, just to show them that you're you're interested in the job. Yeah, and now you want to talk about the awkward part? <laughs> oh, when to communicate with the supervisor? Yeah, I guess I'll communicate that real quick. Yeah, so yeah. you can Google HBR anything. It's depending on when you're applying. Does your boss know? I would say if it's an internal application, just give your supervisor boss like a heads up. Um, if it's external, you could or couldn't. Either way, like leaving a job, it's it's rough 
because you probably you invest a lot of time there. It's rough on them. They invested in a lot of your training. But just making sure you're at least thinking about when should I tell them that I'm leaving or considering I'm leaving because you don't want to absolutely blindside them and leave them empty handed because, again, you never know if you have to go back and work there again. Yeah, definitely don't want to burn any bridges. All right, so interview preparation. Yes, you have to prepare for an interview. You can always search for example interview questions, practice, but make sure you don't sound rehearsed in your interview. I actually caught myself on one, one of my interviews that I sounded really rehearsed. What I do is that I kind of get like the template of questions and I kind of just have bullets of like just key points like I want to say. Jay Rich mentioned it, work on your introduction or your elevator speech. It kind of like sets the tone for the interview. Try to highlight the strengths and weaknesses based off your CV. Like I think it's interesting that there's candidates that in their interview, they don't mention anything in their CV. Like not many, remember we're busy, we're in pharmacy. The manager may not have had time to go through your entire CV. So give them a reason to flip through it, right? Uh, make sure you research the institution, kind of showing that, yes, you are interested in working there someday, uh, the employees. Like one thing that I always that thought was helpful with that, I, I wanted to see if anyone's been published and maybe want to talk about their article, you know, especially when you get to the question, part, like tell me how you got your job and making sure that you can answer why you want to work there specifically. A lot of candidates, they'll give you a very generic answer. Oh, the hospital is growing. Pharmacy is great. <laughs> Uh, specifically, like, is it innovation automation? Is it because of resident train? Try to get the specifics about the program you're applying for, and then having your questions specific, but make sure like you actually think about like have a set questions that you want to ask. Yeah, definitely come prepared with questions. I think that shows that the person has done their due diligence. They're not asking questions that they can easily find on the internet. All right, so preparation for interview day. So not only do you have to prep for interview, you got to prep for the day because I'll tell you, if you're doing those day or two-day interviews, like especially the ones with like the dinner the night before and then you interview day and then those days are so long because you're just like in the zone the entire time. Go ahead, Jay Rich. Um, how do I prepare for an interview day? Yeah, you want to prepare for an interview day for sure. Uh, you want to review the agenda and see what, what, um, what your days kind of look like, how it's important for me. Man, I have like the smallest bladder of all time. I don't know if that's too much information, but I'm gonna. <laughs> but if I know the agenda, <laughs> I, 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 but if, you would get me. Yes, I put that there for me too. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like meals. I'm like, I am not gonna eat anything in a soup because I need a bib <laughs> to eat yeah. anything in public. Dude, so I'm just gonna have a big bre- breakfast and just rely on that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you you review the agenda, then you then you incorporate your. The, how are you going to manage your meal, uh, bathroom breaks, uh, things like that? And you know, I'm the clumsiest person. If I don't spill something on my on my clothes at least once a day, then that's you know, that never happens. You want to make sure your suit's prepared. There's nothing more stressful than rummaging through your closet or doing last minute ironing uh, the morning of your interview. I forgot my pants at mid year. I didn't pack my pants. <laughs> my wife had to overnight me pants. <laughs> for PPS, these had, I'm not joking. So I didn't get the chance overnight. Oh man, I, I went there days earlier. But man, yeah, definitely be prepared. Uh, you want to incorporate travel time. You want to allow for you know traffic. Uh, you want to allow for you know parking for walking to where you need to be. Definitely always. I always try to be like an hour early, just so if I'm there, I'm at least I'm there, right? I could spend that hour preparing for it. You know, getting comfortable. Um, you know, easing into it. And you definitely want to take some time in the beginning to review your notes, just so you're uh, you're ready. Yep, and then making sure you don't sound rehearsed, right? So, all right. So the interview day. So you prepped, and I think the reason why you want to like prepare is because like you'll be confident. Like, all right, I got this. So you want to project confidence, good body posture. Try to notice your nervous tics. So like, you ever get presentations like, is your voice cracking because you're nervous? Is your uh, are you tapping your foot? during an interview are you like messing around with your binder or folder are you crumbling something what are you what are you doing what do you do with your hands during an interview right i am so, i am you know i'm notorious for clicking my pen when i'm nervous so i click 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 right so i have to keep my hands folded in front of me on the desk if i don't do that then i'm going to be distracting <laughs> the heck out of everyone in the room this episode's fun yeah, like I, I, I'm flipping my pen, so, and I caught myself like three times. I'm like, oh, I gotta stop. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> make sure you're being energetic and flexible. Being energetic, so think about like if like we talk about, I'm interviewing you. You know, 
pharmacy is tough on Sundays. I need someone that's going to bring energy to the team. You know, so like be excited that you're there and interviewing. And be flexible. And again, with the agenda, agendas change, meetings get popped in. Like you'll see that on some of the agendas, the director's there, but then the director gets pulled in with the C suite. Like you never know. So make sure you're flexible and understanding. Take notes, especially if you're interviewing in more than one place, and be yourself. So yeah, we're preparing, and I'm not sure we should have said this earlier, Jonathan. Like when we're preparing, like make sure you're preparing like things that like you like you want them to know about you, not the person that they think they want to know. Because we talked about fit. So if you're not being yourself, they're not they're gonna select the wrong person. You're gonna be unhappy, right? So make sure you just be yourself at the end of it, and make sure they pick you for you. Like you're there, you're interviewing. They already think you're a good candidate, and make sure that you understand the questions repeated if needed. And take your time with responses. Like people think that because you're nervous, right? You feel like like one second feels like one hour because you're nervous. So when they ask you a question, just you can there can be a pause. A pause is fine. Take the time to process. Like when I first started interviewing, like I used to like write down like some portions of the question that kind of helped me like slow down a little bit. There's some other techniques you guys could always look up. But just make sure you understand the question because you don't want to answer the question wrong because like Jay Ridge said in the last episode, there's a rubric and you can lose some points because you didn't answer the question. I think, you know, I think it's like, this is my point of view, but it's highly underrated. Uh, people who take time to respond because when someone, when you ask them a question and they take their time, they're taking a second um, and they're gathering their thoughts, that's them putting, you know, putting time into their answer. They want to make sure they're responding to the question appropriately and fully. And uh, it really, for me, I, I mean, I love that trait. All right. Phone and vin- video interviews. JRH, want to hit him with the nuggets on that? Yeah. For uh, phone and video interviews, for, especially for the phone, you want to clear the room and you want to make sure you're not getting interrupted. Uh, you want to close the door, make sure there's no, nothing that, um, the, if you're, if you're doing it at your house, make sure the people in your house know that this is happening at this time. So, you know, don't barge in or take care of the dog or the baby if you can. Um, don't be eating or drinking. <laughs> my, my biggest pet peeve is the sound of someone chewing. And that's in general. When you're on the phone and that's literally up to your ear and that's what you're hearing, that's one of the most annoying things. Uh, and make sure you're taking good notes, just like you were a, a face-to-face interview. For video, it's definitely important to test the connection. Make sure your webcam projects clearly and the audio is working. Um, you want to try to connect in advance. You know, get on earlier just to make sure that everything is running smoothly. You want to be in a room that does not have a distracting back wall. You don't want to take their attention away from the interview. Uh, you could suit up. You could do it uh, fully. Or you could just wear the top half, depending on how brave you are. For me, I would just do a full suit just in case, you know, they get a glimpse of you you wearing your gym shorts or something like that as your bottoms. You want to smile and make eye contact with the webcam like you're like you're there in person. The same nonverbals you use in an interview, you want to make sure you're displaying those in a video interview. And you can also post your notes to help you stay on track uh, with, the, with the video interview. All right. How to ace specific questions. So remember, like starting with your elevator speech, your introduction kind of sets a tone. And the only reason why I feel comfortable saying this because like the MHA, so when I got my MHA degree, like every class we started with an introduction. <laughs> so there you got this right. So you want to obviously start with your name, your current role, what you do in that role. Briefly, there's people that will give you the full life story in that role. Just briefly what you do and what you kind of oversee a little bit. Um, The school you graduated from, hopefully they went to that school. Boom, you already connected with them, right? Uh, And why you pursued this field and why you excited this position. So kind of just trying to tie back in, like this is about me and this is why I think I – this is why you should hire me, (laughs) that kind of thing. Um, There are a couple million other questions that we can answer, but I just want to highlight weaknesses. Always try to pick characteristics that you can flip into strengths. Um, Some examples are – I'm a perfectionist. I'm very critical of myself. And you can flip those just because that you could say at the end of it, I just want to make sure that I'm doing the best I can. I'm delivering a great quality product, advancing patient care, whatever the case may be. Or simply say something you would like to improve on. Like if you didn't have a whole lot of experience on that, you can say that because that comes with the job. The job, you know, you're going to be trained either way. So some examples that could be like writing or public speaking but make sure that if you're saying something just be able like how are you going to continue to work on that weakness 
Yeah, and I think uh, explaining how you're working on it is important. I think um, when you're answering any question, whether it's strengths or weaknesses, you're giving specific examples for that. So if they're asking for your strengths and they're and you'd be like, I'm I'm good at time management, right? How are you good at time management? What are some examples of things that you do that make that make that your strength? I think giving some some uh, meat to the bones of the question definitely helps improve your uh, your interview. And again, just make sure you're following up with the interview. Um, write a thank you letter or email shortly after thanking them, and just follow up in two weeks if you haven't heard anything. Try to get a feel for who you interview with. Are they old school? Do they prefer computer, email, phone? So however they've been checking in with you during that process, I would continue that same mode of communication. Definitely. And, and then that thank you or follow up, you know, I like to include something specific that happened during that interview just so they, you know, have something to remember you by. All right. The job offer. Jonathan, want to talk about the job offer and how that works? Yeah. So job offer, it's usually offered by HR. So you, you probably interviewed with, you know, a director or the supervisor for position, but you will receive a phone call or an email correspondence from HR. When you do, you're not going to want to accept right on the spot. You're going to request some time to make a decision, right? Because you're weighing the pros and cons of, of the job. You already got an offer. So if you ask for some time, you can weigh, weigh those options. This is the time where you're going to have to go through some salary negotiation or benefits uh, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and requesting the time to make a decision, just buy yourself time. Don't say, I'll give you a decision tomorrow, you know, unless, like, you know, obviously if it's your dream job or everything, but, like, this is under the assumption that, you know, you would like your rate to be a little more competitive, then, yeah, absolutely request time to make a decision, push it out. So, like, oh, after the holidays, I got to discuss with my wife or girlfriend, whatever. Solid negotiations, interesting. Um, when you're negotiating, you know, try to leverage your accomplishments. Are you board certified? Do you have master's degrees? Do you have other degrees? Um, are you published? So try and say like compare me to the same person in this role in your organization based off of my experience. So you can still remember HR's job is to be competitive with their offer. It's negotiation, you know, but you make sure you're as professional as possible about it, obviously. Right. You definitely want to um – be professional, but uh, you know some things that you can try to negotiate for. You know, uh, retention bonuses, uh, relocation, um, if you have to move for the job or, or travel, things like that. Um, that can kind of sweeten the deal a little bit. Yeah, like pay for my like mid-year conferences and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean seriously though, the, like the the um, continuing education or, or professional events, anything that can help you grow at your job that they're willing to cover. That's such an added bonus. The summary, Jonathan, you're on fire, man. Just summarize this episode for us. Summary, you want to make sure that your goals are lining up with the role, with the position that you're uh, applying for. You want to make sure you're leveraging your social media for your self-marketing. Uh, like we said, LinkedIn as a very important uh, tool. Writing a strong cover letter, uh, having your CV up to date, and selecting references is very key. Um, you're preparing for the interview, but you don't want to sound too rehearsed. Um, you're preparing for the day, right? You're making sure you're hydrated. You have a good breakfast. You're relaxed. You're getting there early. You're not rushing. You look sharp. You got, you know, the GQ thing going on. Um, you want to provide tier three action responses, and you want to definitely avoid burning bridges. If this place isn't the, if this role or this place isn't necessarily right for you at this time, that doesn't mean you won't be going back to this in the future. Or that person who's interviewing you leaves and goes to another, you know, hospital or, or another, you know, organization, you you might run into them later on. You'd be surprised, like, how I started building a network just because of when I complete when I was about to complete my residency and I interviewed a couple places, like, I was already starting to build a network. So just try to be as respectful as possible and, uh, you know, let them get to know you a little bit. So, yeah, great summary, Jay Rich. So, guys, that concludes this episode uh, interviewing like a pro. Thank you guys for listening in. Thank you, Jonathan Richardson, not only for your bars, but also for your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I, I appreciate you, uh, you having me on here. All right, cool. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself on the way out, sir. But, uh, again, I'm Jonathan Richardson. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm Oscar Santalo. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at farm so hard underscore OS. And you can also friend me and Jonathan, 
um, on LinkedIn. So we're active in there. All right. Take it easy, guys. Yep. Keep farming hard. Bye.